And when it comes to how those raise money, I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have, oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. I'll be happy to fund my political operation through the work of hardworking Americans, 10 and 20 and $30 at a time, and you all keep showing up at the lobbyist fundraiser and see how that goes for you. I reserve. All right, so Matt Gates, he's our he's our federal bill sponsor, and uh, he is in every single headline worldwide right now for dethroning Kevin McCarthy. Um, we've been getting a lot of emails and phone calls from our people asking, what the heck, what am I supposed to believe? I turn on Fox News, there's Newt Gingrich saying this, these people, these eight people, are all traitors? What am I supposed to believe? Right. We, we, you guys, and referring to us, we um, certainly have an opinion on it. Let's break this down for our members and our supporters why this was an excellent play that Gates made. And I'll tip it over to either one of you two guys to start us off here. Well, yeah, I mean, a little bit of background on Gates uh, there, Chris. You know, um, you know, we w we went with him as our abolish the ATF sponsor. Yeah, and uh, we knew we knew who this guy was, and he was a right. he was a troublemaker. You know, the, the the left likes to talk about good trouble and this and that. It's like, you know, our time that that we've spent around him over the years from a, from a, a a professional perspective is this guy is on message, he's on point, and he's there to burn it down. And um, yeah. you know, Washington needs to be shaken. Um, and I think you know this is a this is a guy who. You know, when, when you hear the swamp call somebody a clown or whatever, it's like, dude, that guy's doing something right. And all the knives are out for him right now. And give him credit, man. I mean, he just he he for the first time, I think, in history, a, a sitting speaker was taken out with this maneuver. And and this is a hell of a play. Well, I mean, we're all I mean, we're all in our 40s. And for my entire lifetime, we have all of us and, and all everyone watching here, we all are disgusted. With Washington, D.C., everyone hates the fact that once we fight so hard to get Republicans in charge, we get almost worse results than we got under Pelosi the way it seems. Because these guys just sit there and like kiss each other's backside day in and day out. And we've always sat back and said, when are things going to change? And clearly, if you watch Matt Gates, this is what, seventh year there? I think it is in D.C. now. He's just like, I am not going to sit in this town any longer and abide by the status quo. Something's going to give. I'm going to flip over the table. And that's what he did. We should all of us be applauding that. Um, through our the, the, the channels that I monitor the most, like Ohio Gun Owners and Pennsylvania Firearms Association, one of the, one of the things that we've been getting comments on, and, and a lot of these people, members, uh, I'm sorry about that. I have an article that just popped up playing some audio. One of the things that we're hearing from people that are not members is, well, we need a, a, a government that functions in Washington, D.C. I guess that's a, a, the first question I think we should address here. Do we want a government that functions as usual in Washington, D.C.? Is that one of the things that we're supposed to hold up as conservative Republicans as you know something we're supposed to push for? Because in my experience and in my opinion, a government that works seamlessly in Washington, D.C. is one that screws over the grassroots at yeah. every single level. The Uniparty. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and one word that's coming out of the Fox News echo chamber, and this is being fed directly from Kevin McCarthy's people who are just ragingly angry right now. The one word that comes out, and, and you see it a little bit out there, is chaos. This is chaos. This is chaos. Well, you know, it's chaos to them because order to them is just everything is predetermined. You know, you, you go and vote. You know how the vote's going to go. You go have your steak dinner at lunch or maybe you have a couple drinks at lunch with the lobbyists. Then you go at dinner with the lobbyists. This has been shaken. OK, this has been shaken up by Gates and some of these other people who joined him. And, um, you know, when you hear chaos and I, I've seen a little bit out there and in, in, in to follow up on what you said, Chris, it's like, well, what do we do next? Who are we going to get now? We're going to get somebody worse. Well, like. If you're if you're okay with McCarthy's order, then 
right. you know, you just you don't agree with kind of the stuff that we do. I mean, chaos for a moment, shaking things up, and now you're looking at, you know, potentially a, a much better speaker candidate candidates. Um, it, well, not, that's something I mentioned a minute ago, Patrick. I want to I want to hit this right now. You mentioned this yeah. before you hit the button here. The chaos moniker is mostly coming from the the packs that are giving hundreds of millions of dollars in super packs and direct pack money in November, in December, in early January, because they built their entire two-year business model on Kevin McCarthy being Speaker of the House. And we're talking about trillions of dollars at play in the federal budget on defense contracts, on every conceivable government contract. And so all these big mega uh, corporations who are far and above what we can even comprehend as far as their, their their money supply, they built their whole house of cards on Kevin McCarthy holding the gavel. And right. so we hear this moniker about chaos, chaos, chaos. That is people who are potentially going to lose money, and that is not the kind of folks that we're here to protect with the American Firearms Association. In, in, in many ways, I mean, when I hear, I hear these, these descriptions of chaos, to me, it like it brings me right back to 2016 in the general election. You got you got Donald Trump running against Hillary Clinton, and in my opinion, it that that situ the, the the outcome of that election was the American electorate saying I, we're sick and tired of the perfect uniparty in Washington D.C. So they elected a hand grenade and they threw it up into Washington D.C. for the very purpose right. of disrupting things. And so, I mean, looking at it from that perspective. That's exactly what we needed people like Matt Gates to do. The biggest question I'm getting after that, though, is, you know, isn't this chaos a bad thing? The question that we've been getting from a lot of people is, well, wasn't it a bad thing for Matt Gates to join with all those Democrats in <laughs> order to a accomplish this? Shouldn't it, if, shouldn't it have been the Republicans that removed McCarthy instead of him having to rely on the Democrats? And I'm just going to let you, one of you guys answer because you guys are doing great jobs of of answering well, after I tee it up. Yeah, I mean, I'll hit that. Back in the speaker's fight, no Democrat voted for Kevin McCarthy. But guess what? It, it, in, in the debt ceiling deal, it was, I, I can go look at the numbers. I don't have it in front of me. I think it was more Democrats and Republicans who voted for that. And then the most recent, uh, they had that continuing resolution, more Democrats or at least well over 100 right. Democrats went along, right along with it. So to me, it's just bunk. And then, you know, less than 24 hours later, um, and I think this is definitely up our alley because, uh, you know, the Ukraine stuff, I mean, they're, you know, just from a country perspective, just caring about our country, the, the, the Biden administration and these Ukraine people, they're literally like just just uh, emptying out our stockpiles, yes. uh, our defensive stockpiles as a country yes. and sending them to another country. And, and of course, that fits right into ammunition and guns and everything else. And um but yeah, I think I think there's a lot of good that's come out of this, and um, to me, Ukraine is is a, is a big one, man. And and the Democrats are all about Ukraine. So, I mean, it, it's I mean, just your, bull, it's bull crap. Yeah. You know? I mean, to you to your question, Chris, Matt Gates did not stand with congressional Democrats. The Democrats followed Matt Gates. Let's get that straight. First of all, Matt Gates uh, led this fight, and so they can all sit there and say, well, it's it's not, it's not good to work with the Democrats. But if Matt Gates, I mean, because he, he, here's the deal. Gates could sit there and hold this seat until he's an 80 year old man. His seat is unassailable in Florida from a from a general election perspective. He's not going to ever lose a primary. It'd be easy if you're Matt Gates to do what everybody else in that town does. Yeah. You sit back, you pop a beer and you watch your country burn to the ground. So it had been easy. That had been easy. He could have avoided all the pain, all the media. And so if anybody's sitting here wondering, well, isn't he like, you know, fighting with the wrong side? Is he just try, trying to go for headlines? Just ask yourself, what, what rational person, if his goal was self-promotion, if his goal was all about himself, would take that road, would take that route? If he sat back and did nothing, it had been a status quo and our country would suffer for it. That's why, that's why Gates did it. It's just pure and simple. One, and, one thing one thing I'm going to add in here, too, as we sit here and think about this and work our way through this, um, is it very much mirrors what happens in state legislatures as we've experienced all across the country. You know, like like in any given state legislature right now, there's not like if, if it's controlled by a Republican caucus, for example, the majority of those Republicans are not rock solid, staunch conservatives. 
the majority of them are corrupt rhinos that simply follow the herd and the herd goes wherever leadership directs it to go. Um, so for, for these eight people to have set out on a course of action and said, this is what we're going to try to accomplish. And we are going to use every tactic in our toolbox available to get it to happen. Well, in many ways, that's exactly what we do with constitutional carry, with stand your ground law, with SAPA and all these different state legislatures. We use the committed actions of a few to try to leverage that, whatever the political climate is, to get the desired outcome. I think Matt Gates, what he did here, uh, wasn't uh, wasn't outlandish at all. It wasn't chaotic at all. It was very rational and reasonable to use the tools that were available hit to him uh, to get the head of the herd uh, dethroned. And it's been a ten month long program. I <laughs> mean, he laid yeah. this out when he got the rules package uh, assembled in January. One member can uh, you know can can take this action. So he obviously has been planning this for ten months. Like you said, it was not chaotic. It was very rational and. Yeah, again, if, if if anybody watching, if you're confused about the noise, like this was this was going to be something worse could come of this. What worse can come of this? We already right. had a backstabbing weasel scoundrel as the Speaker of the House. We may get another backstabbing weasel scoundrel Speaker of the House. If that's all that accomplished uh, from from Gates's actions, he showed the entire country that one congressman, if he wants to actually use the power he has can upset everything, can stop everything. You mentioned Ukraine money, Patrick. So if, if nothing else, we put the brakes on the entire cabal and we might get a better speaker. Maybe we get Jim Jordan, maybe you get Scalise, maybe you get somebody else. But if nothing better comes of this in terms of the speakership, the power base in D.C. was rocked to its core. And how anybody could wonder how that's a good thing is beyond me. Yeah, it's funny... Um... Agree totally, Aaron. And, and, you know, we were saying this back in January, you, you know, Gates is basically like after he did, after he did that fight, you know, the speaker fight, like he could just walk around like a freaking peacock man through that, through that capital, knowing that at any time, if he could bring five or six people, yeah. McCarthy and them knew what was going to happen. They, he was going to go down or at least they thought they did. Um, but you know, to follow up on one more point, not, not necessarily on the strategic point there, just an, an, an antidote. Um, they tried to embarrass Gates. They cut off his microphone. I don't know if you guys knew this, but they cut his microphone off and told him to go to the Democrat side. Yeah. So the optics would be, oh, look at the Democrats behind him, which backfired because if any of us were on social media, you would have seen Ilhan Omar sitting right behind him. And it was actually a very comedic thing. Oh, like millions sure. of people, Ilhan was back there like licking her lips and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. it came like this hilarious She's thing. She's not your brother, it. honey. Yeah. She's not your brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then they tried to embarrass him. Um, this guy Garrett Graves from from Louisiana, Louisiana. total slime ball. Oh, well, look at the look at the fundraising. I mean, this is you know, it's just hilarious. And Gates gets a thirty second hit. That's basically which you're not. You shouldn't technically be allowed to do it on the House floor. He was just he responding it. to this guy. Tens and tens of millions of people saw. Go to mattgates.com and chip in ten, twenty, or thirty bucks. The swamp and these guys, they're so disconnected from everybody watching this video right now. And most of the things that we believe, you know, that that if you were confused, if you're watching this, you were confused. Hey, Gates, what was he doing? Whatever. Like, rethink it for a minute, man. Rethink yeah. it and and watch what happened. And um, th this is this was a historic play by our lead bill sponsor, a guy who has abolished the ATF, repeal the NFA. Is the most eloquent guy on the Second Amendment. Ground. Yeah, rep yeah, uh, the most eloquent guy on the Second Amendment. Really, and, and I'm not just just floating his boat for no reason. Like, really works harder than most of these other people. Is a high IQ guy. Does he make some mistakes? Yeah, sure. But like, you can't have a better guy up there fighting for your Second Amendment rights. No, uh, on and, all these points in Matt Gates. And, and one of the things that really drew us to him in the first place, and we sat down, we were talking with him about this, um, when we were talking to, with him about sponsoring National Stand Your Ground Law. Of course, we knew that we knew that he was the subcommittee chairman in the Florida legislature that defended yep. Stand Your Ground Law, but we didn't know until he was telling us these stories that. He's the guy who had Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson outside of his office door banging on it, try, with all the national news cameras out there trying to get him to repeal the Florida Stand Your Ground law after the Trayvon Martin-George Zimmerman fiasco in 2000, what was that, 2012? Yeah, 
um decade ago man. but the, this guy this guy grew up as a total street fighter when it comes to gun rights he came out of that i think he came out of his office he's like that yeah, let's have a conversation about it but i'm not going to change one period or one paragraph yeah. in the yeah. entire law <laughs> you know and told them right where to stick it that's exactly what we need we we need agents of chaos yeah and, and, so, and everybody's so attacking them. them you take this freshman Derek van orden right from from God. wisconsin you know mr navy seal and of course that's that's to his credit, but the guys that you would think, these freshman guys who are going to be up there like throwing fists, they are trying to shred him on social media. And the reason for it is that what Gates did left them all susceptible to being hit from the right because now they had to vote to back the swamp or to to back freedom. And so and if you and what's crazy is if you read the comment sections on their own platforms, if you read the comment sections yeah. in their own channels. You see, they are being lit on fire by what? 80, 20, 90, 10, right? Uh, my contacts on Capitol Hill are saying that even for the friends on the right who are not attacking uh, Gates because they're more conservative but didn't join the 8th pack, they're still getting burned alive and with phone calls and emails and social media comments saying, why didn't you stand there with him? Why didn't you help him? And so, I mean, the, they, they can all have their, their day in the sun to rage at Gates, but the base who is uh, commenting on this, they are melting these guys down for sticking with the status quo, deep state, swamp, tyranny in D.C. against their own people. That's why, that's why when you, I'm sorry to, I'm going to cut you off, no, no. Patrick, but that's why when you turn on Fox News right now and you see, you see Newt Gingrich standing there, you know, calling these people traitors, don't forget, don't ever forget, he is as swamp creature as it ever got in Washington, D.C. He's a Georgian, right? Right, uh, Patrick? Yeah. One yeah. of the worst. Um, but uh, <laughs> this is a guy who went out there just like Speaker McCarthy did, and he raised millions and millions of dollars, and he pushed. they pushed that money out there to all these races all across the country, and these these congressional races are are funded by these special interest groups, and there is a promise made in return for these massive pack checks. Aaron, you touched on this already. But in, in return for these massive pack checks, you guys are going to get this, 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 and this in the next two years for sure while I'm the speaker. And now people like Max Miller, who didn't like it from Ohio, as an example, he's out there attacking McCart er, er, out there attacking Gates yeah. right and left. This guy didn't have any grassroots support other than what was given to him and a few mentions by Trump and by massive pack checks from McCarthy. Um, so he sits there, he looks at a guy like like Gates. Who has never taken a dime yeah. of PAC money or special interest group money. And he's like, man, that guy represents exclusively the people. The only reason why he's here is because the people themselves give money to this guy, not the PACs. He's not beholden to anybody. And that pisses off a lot of these Congress members. And a lot of these uh, these special interest groups are really furious that they're not going to get their big, massive federal checks over the next two years. Yeah, a couple points there. A, 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 a big red flag. I mean, many of you guys know I worked on Capitol Hill uh, in a congressional office, but a big red flag. And and we we polled our members yesterday on uh, on who they support for speaker. We just want to know for the heck of it. When yeah. You're seeing these members. They don't. It's Scalise or Jordan, right? And they're putting out polls on their Twitter pages and stuff. Guys, this they they really want to know because it's it now matters. everything has been upended. You don't have Kevin there to help you anymore, and and there and some of these rhino guys who don't believe in anything or whatever, they're just going along to get along. They like they have a choice to make now. If they go with Steve Scalise and he's got twenty five percent support from their supporters, right. they may flip. I mean, this is the position these guys are in, and, and, and the order has been upended, and it's a big damn deal. And on Newt Gingrich, <laughs> this guy, and, and a lot of people don't know this. All I right. put it out on Twitter the other day on my, on my personal Twitter page, but his chief of staff was Kevin McCarthy's chief of staff up until like two months ago. And there's a big New York Times spread of his chief of staff, um, Newt and McCarthy all sitting in his office. And so you you think Newt uh, does, didn't have some, some money pipelines going on there? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And um, I can tell you this for a fact, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, and his gang of characters, his top lobbyist is Jeff Miller. When you see people, uh, uh, congressional members on Fox News, that is cleared through Kevin McCarthy and his people. 
Yeah. So some of your favorite people are not going to get primetime spots or great spots on Fox News, man. It's just not. Like when Tucker was on there, he had a little bit more latitude. Maybe Lori Ingram right. and Hannity. But day, throughout the day, midday, you, you know, that that is Republican chosen from the NRCC and Kevin McCarthy. So this is really, really, yeah, really. I hope you guys heard what he just said up there. Yeah. If, if you're watching this later on, I hope you heard what he just said there. The people that you see on Fox News were pre-approved historically have been definitely approved by Republican leadership to go and take and get those sound bites. Definitely. That's not just because the, you know, the, the media is like, Oh look, there's Jim Jordan. Um, you know, he's, he's popular right now. Let's go ask him. No, he's on the list. A lot of these people are on the list of people that are approved by Republican house leadership. And that's why we get to see them. The narrative is certainly control. And that's why some of these faux conservatives are now attacking Gates because everybody's power base flows through Kevin McCarthy, everybody in that town. If, if, if that's the power base you're seeking, Matt Gates's power base is of the people. But so for everybody else, their PAC money comes through him, their Fox News hits come through him, their office assignments, okay, that's more of a lottery, but like literally down to the parking spot, right? Like their entire life, hinges around the pleasure of Kevin McCarthy. I have been in vehicles with uh, other members of Congress who they get phone calls from Kevin. It's like, oh, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, God bless you, sir. And I'm just like, aren't you also a member of Congress? Like, yeah. Like, dude, this guy is not the second coming. And so, again, just, just question, just question the motives of every single person that you see right now slamming Matt Gates. If they're a congressman, we've hit that a hundred times. Uh, if they're a member of the state legislature, I've seen a lot of that. Too. I've seen state lawmakers, a lot of them, uh, asking questions about this. It's the same thing. Chris mentioned this a few minutes ago. The same dynamic occurs in every state capital in the country. And yeah. the people who are whining right now are the folks who lack the guts to do the kind of things that Matt Gates did uh, in their own their own pool, in their own pod. And so they can sit there and whine and take pot shots because they will never have the fortitude to upset the swamp in Des Moines, in Atlanta, in Jeff City, and you pick your state capital, Columbus, all of them. That's the reason why state lawmakers are attacking him. So just question the motives heavily because the only people who lose in this arrangement over the last week are all the power-hungry PACs, all the power hungry politicians, the people, we win. We won. Absolutely. It was a great day for all of us. Yeah. Yep. Any any closing thoughts, Patrick? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I, I think that we need to see more of this. And I think Aaron touched on it, probably Chris too. It's just like regular order in Washington sucks, man. I mean, yeah. it's we're getting screwed. Yeah. And I, I think you know, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder here, but here at the American Firearms Association, as, as most of us, most of y'all may know if you're watching, like we um, we operate our, the bulk of our operations most of the time are in, in state capitals because we know that these type of plays we run all the time in, in capitals across the country. In Washington, yeah. they're more rare and, and it's a much bigger machine to run. Um, but a lot of you guys out there who are members of our state groups and even our federal group, that's where these big fights, you know, we, we, we learn, we should learn from what happened in Washington and, and, and do it more at the state level. Amen. Well, we wanted to come here and unpack this for you guys a little bit. And I think I will end with this. Like the last thing I would ask you guys to go do is if you've been just watching the news or, or getting stories in your social media feeds uh, that are, that have been shaping the way you think about this. I would encourage any of you to go on YouTube and watch the 60 minutes of debate between Matt Gates and everybody else who is opposed to him. You will find yourself agreeing with every single word that the man says. And so we can sit here and vouch for Matt Gates as much as we want on this issue, but nothing will convince you of the truth of his position and the integrity of what he did than his own words himself. So uh, we'll, I think we'll try to probably include a YouTube video or YouTube link with this. So you guys can go watch that if you haven't. But uh, last thing I'll ask you to do is go and share this video with all of your friends so that they can get uh, fully up to speed on what a great play this was. Absolutely.